Hello everyone, welcome to October 1961. Um, so we start with this issue here. Um, so I like the front cover, it looks quite stylish to me I think. Um, sort of quite subtle and obviously it's the man again with a few women, that's kind of the, the standard playboy, playboy look. It obviously has got a little drink here which looks like a champagne glass I think. Um, so we'll just go through the some of the features. We've got fall and winter fashion forecast photographed by Richard Avedon. We have how I made my first billion by J. Paul Getty. And we've got the 1962 Playboy Jazz Poll ballot as well. So uh, we'll go through some of the initial few pages, all the regular things that you're used to. Taste my screwdriver is made with Waldschmidt vodka. Um, never heard of that before, Waldschmidt, but... Um, who knows whether it's good or not. Uh, we've got lots of clothing ads and that's something that's coming through. And you notice that although we talked about this era being extremely uh, kind of consumerist, it's just the array of products. It's like every gadget and gizmo, every form of clothing, textile. This is all new. This All these manufacturing techniques. This is, um, you know, post-war boom. Uh, and this is where the boomers really uh, made their mark. So we've got a few things here. This little Sony um, this is a transistorized portable TV. Uh, we'll skip to the first part. Uh, we've got some reasonable articles this month. The Playboy, the Playmate of the Month is a bit of a letdown. She is very plain. I will warn you. Uh, you may disagree with me. Please let me know if you do. But for me, she just seems a little bit too plain. Um, so we've got a few more. Lots of imagery of cars at the moment uh, in the magazine. Uh, there's quite a few different... Um, sort of travels, the aeroplanes, there's cars, that kind of thing. No motorbikes, I've noticed. I don't know if that changes in Playboy. Um, I don't know if it's because Hugh Hefner didn't like motorbikes, so I'm not too sure, but we're not seeing many around this era. Maybe it's just because the motorbikes at this era aren't great, possibly. Who knows? Um, so this have got Playboy uh, Club news again. Give a Playboy Club key for Christmas. And then we have our first uh, article here, The Knife Score. This is fiction by Ken Purdy. Uh, little cartoons with Playboy's fall and winter fashion forecast. The definitive statement on the coming trends in menswear and accessories. So this, obviously the photography is so much better now. They obviously have their own studios. They have own their own in-house um, photographers. So it all looks more professional. You go back to 1950s and everything just seemed like it had been taken by someone else and it's just been kind of patched into the magazine. Um, but there's some nice imagery here as well. So this is a nice cartoon. Um, I like the sort of the sort of feel of it, the atmosphere of the uh, the cartoon. Uh, we have godly gear and blandishments to beguile your bibbing guests, and this is a little piece here on all the different accessories that you can buy for your home. Um, we've got J. Paul Getty, who is that famous billionaire. How I made my first billion. Uh, so a little card, little article here, an exclusive and candid recount of how the noted financier amassed his fortune, and it was in dodgy circumstances. I think now we know more. Obviously, they didn't know at the time. Uh, we've got John um, Dedham uh, image here as well. This is my first day in Paris. It's all that I ever imagined. So here he is, and I think a lot of the influence for Playboy was obviously from Europe. It was from mainly Paris, I guess, Italy. Uh, I think a lot of the writers were from the UK or English, but certainly European influence. October's Woodland Nymph likes nature au naturel, and this is our Playmate of the Month. Um, we've got Jean Cannon. Again, I think she's probably the plainest um, Playmate out of all of them. because I think it's because the photography and the makeup and that thing isn't great, but I think that was it was meant to be that way. It was meant to be uh, far more natural, you know, the, the girl next door kind of thing. Eric Sokol, um, so he's regular cartoon. Then we have uh, Jack Sharkey, or conversation with Jack Sharkey. Um, this cartoon's quite nice here, this little drawing. And uh, we never kiss anymore. I like the style, though. That's really nice. And then we have uh, Gerald Walker, uh, Fire Out Discourse on Intergalactic Intercourse. Uh, Take me to your leader. Uh, anthro anthology of Prose. And this is by Chip, uh, Chip Ray. Chip Re sorry, Ray. Chip Ray. Uh, let's have a quick look. So a little um, pictorial here. Creme de la Creme, this is fruit by Thomas Mario. For the glacé eyed gourmet, a magnificent melange of perfect parfait, marvellous mousses and formidable fraps. 
uh, Stravinsky, the world's most, the world's greatest contemporary composer, as revealed by his masterworks. This is by Roland, uh, I believe it's uh, Gelat or Galat, but he uh, passed away. He was a uh, a composer and uh, sort of a journalist. Uh, I think he passed away. I think it must be in the 60s, I think, or 70s, possibly. Uh, I don't think he lived too long. I'd have to check that. A Short History of Bathing by William Iverson. Some nice pictures in here as well. Uh, some quite nice models, nice sets as well. This is all really nice, and you'll see it here as well. Uh, I don't know who this lady is. I'm not sure if she's featured in the magazine before. Perhaps you know. Uh, Bojo Rolo takes two to tango. This is Humour by William E. Massey. Uh, 1962 Playboy Jazz Poll. Vote for your favourites for the sixth Playboy All Star Jazz Band. So you have all of your selections here. This cartoon sort of caught my eye by Gain Wilson. Uh, it's quite clever, very simple. You sort of look at it, wondering what it is, and then you've got the world is coming to an end. And obviously, this was a sign that was on Earth, and uh, Earth is now just debris apart from this sign. So um, that's quite a, uh, a good little cartoon, that one. On the scene, we have A.M. Soderbend, we have Oscar Brown Jr., Bertrand Goldberg. Um, so some nice photographs here. Uh, I wonder where this was taken, some of these photos. Uh, we'll keep going through. There's not too much in this magazine uh, this particular month, but it feels like a very plain issue. Um, nothing really stands out for me, not the, the playmate of the Marvel. I think the cartoon and probably the Bath article it's probably the things that I enjoyed the most. So hopefully things will start improving. I didn't get time to record the podcast yesterday. I was going to do the first episode on Saturday, but I had quite a lot on. I've been looking for a new car because I've sold my one. Uh, so I have been busy uh, this weekend. But um, I will get it out to you this week. And it, the first part of the uh, podcast is going to be about Hugh Hefner, as I said before, where the uh, where, where it all started. You know, just a little discussion about the man himself uh, kind of where he came from what his kind of mindset was what he wanted to do uh, that's what we're going to focus on um, kind of how he broke out of the mold and did something that he really wanted to do so that's us done for this month uh, I'm going to head out and get the next one read and reviewed for possibly tomorrow but I need to do the podcast as well so enjoy the rest of your weekend and I'll see you most likely on Monday but possibly Tuesday see you later on